So how many of you would like to be more successful, please? Uh, excellent, thank you. How many of you would like to hopefully avoid burnout? Excellent. Anybody interested in both of those things? <laughs> yes, okay, great, thank you. Hey, so listen, I wanna thank you guys for coming here and spending this uh, morning with me. I also wanna thank Ellen and Ellen Designs, uh, Ellen Walker Design Solutions, thank you, I messed up your name, uh, <laughs> for sponsoring this and putting this together and inviting me out here. So I'm really, really glad, and thanks for those kind words. It's like, it's been a pleasure knowing you, seriously, and uh, being able to get to work with you over this time. It's been my pleasure and my blessing. I've learned a lot too. So, um, can I tell you a little bit about why I do this? I'll take a couple minutes to do it, yeah, okay. So, uh, I've been, as Ellen says, I've been you know, a registered psychologist for quite a while now. It's uh, actually been, I was calculating, I've been actually practicing for about 25 years, and it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> That's, uh, so, I've, I'm, I'm happy to be able to do that. Uh, over the time, what I've seen is a lot of people struggle with things that, you know, they don't always know how to get out of, and I've been in that situation too. I've actually burnt myself out twice uh, doing this job, whether it was doing the job like for with clients or just dealing with my own family stuff. I've burnt myself out twice, and so this particular thing that I'm going to be teaching you today, talking to you about today, is very personal to me. It's come out of my own blood, sweat, and tears. So uh, it's like the hair club for men, right? I'm not just the president, I'm a client too. So <laughs> it's like, you know, so I've done this as well. So I'm willing to share with you what I've experienced and hopefully you'll be able to share with me what you've experienced as well, okay? So, but before we get into that, can I ask some, um, something from you guys, okay? So I don't ask rhetorical questions. So whenever I ask a question, I'd like an answer, like an actual verbal answer. Is that okay with you guys? <laughs> it was a test. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I want it, audience participation, okay? So how many people have heard of karma, right? Uh, you know, kind of what goes, at, what goes around comes around or what you put in you get out of, okay? So what would you like to get out of this morning? Growth. Self-discovery, knowledge. Self motivation. motivation, yeah. Tools, Tools. awesome. So the more you want to get out, the more you need to put in, okay? The more fully you participate, the more you're gonna get out of the whole program. And actually, um, so my PhD is in uh, counseling psychology, and it's a, uh, an emphasis or a specialization in marriage and family therapy. But I also have a master's in educational and developmental psychology. And what we know about how we learn is the more fully we participate, the more we do stuff with the new information, the more quickly we learn it and the better we're able to recall it when we need it, okay? So, everybody's going to participate, right? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, how many people have heard of the fable of the goose that laid the golden egg? One or two people, yes. Who feels brave enough to tell us the story? Or do you remember it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's still early. Everybody's shy. That's okay. I'll tell the story if I make me work. <laughs> okay. So the farmer, there's a poor farmer, and the only thing he and his family have are a g is a goose, okay? So what they usually do is they, they go out in the morning, they collect the eggs, and they go and take the eggs to the market to sell it and buy something else so they can live that day, right? So one day, he goes out and he finds that the goose has laid a solid gold egg. So he's, he's mystified. He says, ooh, this is amazing, right? He thinks it's a trick, but he, you know, he tests it, and it's, it's true. It's a, gold, it's a golden egg. So he's now rich. So he goes out the next day, another golden egg. The next day, another golden egg. Before you know it, he's really rich. Now what happens is, in addition to being rich, he gets greedy and kind of impatient. So he says, you know what? I'm so rich. Why should I have to go out and actually lift up the goose and collect the golden eggs every day. I want all the golden eggs now. So he pulls out his knife, goes out, grabs the goose, cuts open the goose to reach in to get all the golden eggs, and what does he find? Nothing, goose guts, right? He's, do he's done. Killed the goose that laid the golden egg, okay? So the first question for you guys is, who are you in that story? Are you the goose? Are you the farmer? Are you the egg? Or are you some combination of them? Okay, so they can take a few moments, talk to the person beside you, 
and kind of figure out, discuss, which one of those you think you are in this story. Okay, so take about a minute or two to do that. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, so. Who thinks they are the egg? Awesome, one, one egg, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna take egg till we get two eggs. All right, we got two eggs. How many people think they're the goose? All right, excellent. How many people feel like the goose sometimes anyway? Yeah, okay. How many people think they're the farmer? Okay, what about a combination? All right, okay, so what do we have? So yell out to me, what, what do we have? All three. All three? Yeah. Okay, how so? Explain that. At different points in life, dealing with different situations. Mm -hmm. you, you just said as a mother, you are a goose, always. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, yeah, at, at different points. Okay. All three. Good, thank you. Any other thoughts on that? Who, why, why were you the egg? Why do you say you're the egg? Uh, I just felt like uh, I'm kind of like the product and how, how do I, um, yeah, I, I feel just from a business, like when you think like that, I'm like, oh yeah, mothering and, mm -hmm. and life and friendship and marriage and all that. But the product part of it is what kind of stuck with me. And mm -hmm. How do I value myself? Mm -hmm. You are your product that you put out to the market, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Like that perspective too. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. No, I just think that I, I chose the um, the, the farmer, although mm -hmm. I. Would, agree that probably I'm all three at times. Mm -hmm. But um, I did that because I'm, I can be impatient. Like I just want, <laughs> you know, I want all that stuff right. to happen now and I don't want to have to work for it. Right. Like my, you know, anything in my life. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, my experience, thank you for that, and my experience is that our culture kind of trains us to be a bit impatient, yeah. right? It's, um, there was a study done where they looked at the number of work hours that was done by nations, and number one was Japan, okay? And they actually have a work for, they have a, they have a word for death by work, okay? So that it's, in their, it's in their culture, okay? We're number two. Well, we were at the time. I don't know if we still are number two, but we were number two, okay? So there is, a, there is a cultural push for us to be that impatient farmer that goes out and gets the, gets the, tries to get all the eggs at once, okay? So my feeling is we're, we're kind of all three, uh, and we are, we are a different, we play different roles at different times, but we're all, we're, we are our product. We are what we put out to market, but we're also our factory, okay? We are also our own goose, and if we don't take care of our goose, then we have nothing, we have no product. But we're the farmer as well. We're the ones that gets to set, set up our little system and say what we do to look after ourselves. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I had a goose that was laying golden eggs, I'd have a little goose castle with a little goose jacuzzi and some goose friends, you know what I mean? A little, little moat around the goose, the goose pen, right? And make sure the goose has lots of goose chow and whatever. Whatever the goose needs to, to have, to have a long, happy, healthy life. That's what I want to do, because I want to keep getting the golden eggs. Make sense? Okay, so if you are the goose, we also need to do that for you too. You need to do that for yourself too. Make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I've come up with this, this model that I call the me factor, but I want to ask you to do something here. So if we were to think about the things in most people's lives, okay? So work, kids, yourself, family, friends, spouse, okay, or partner, what, how would you rank these things in terms of importance? And when you say importance, not just what you think they should be, but what you actually spend your time with and how you, how you spend your energy, okay? So take you know, 30 seconds and just write these down on a piece of paper and, and put one, two, three, four in terms of your ranking for them, please. No, how you live your life right now. <laughs> you can put you can put a column for how you think it should be as well if you really want to. Yeah, and be honest. Got about another ten seconds.
<laughs> Excellent. Okay, so let's get some numbers here. How many people had work as number one? Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. How many people like kids is number one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. How many people had themselves as number one? One, two. All right. How many people had family and friends, extended family and friends as number one? Okay. How many people had a spouse or partner as number one? I one, put that two. as kids the same. What's that? I did the number one for kids. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to put shared. two and yeah, okay. Perfect. All right. So what do you guys think about this? <laughs> I think it's all wrong. <laughs> I think it's all wrong. Okay. Why do you think it's wrong? I think number one should be me for everybody in the room. Okay. Why is that? Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the rest of the things on the list. Huh. Okay, I see some people nodding their heads. Anybody disagree with that? I think it's something we all know, but we don't do. Yeah. Okay, why do you think we don't do that? We allow ourselves. We allow it. Yeah, we, we, don't allow, we don't allow ourselves or allow the other stuff to come in, right? Yeah. How many people have heard the term, well, you're kind of selfish. Has that ever come up in language or your thoughts or anything like that when you think about looking after yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's a very common kind of idea that you're selfish if you look after yourself. Even, you know, I used to actually call this me first and people were losing their minds <laughs> because they didn't like the title of this because it's like, ooh, that's, oh no, that's terrible, right? But really, that's what it is, okay? So, yeah, so this is what I've, this is what I've come up with. And again, I said, this is, this is a personal thing to me. This is the number one in your notes package, right? So you can kind of see that or your handout, I should say. So really the idea here is that you start in the middle. And how many people have seen those, um, you know, when it's New Year's Eve, the champagne glass cascades, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where the guy goes to the top, he pops the cork, he fills up the top glass and spills over and spills over all the way until all the glasses are filled, right? It's kind of like this, all right? So you really want to start from the inside out. If you have yourself as number one, thank you, <laughs> and then, you know, your partner or your spouse next if this person exists right now, and then your kids, and then your family and friends are work in the world, or sometimes these two can be interchangeable depending on what the situation is, right? But these three for sure have to be in this order, okay? So we're gonna talk about why and how and, and why this makes sense. But, so each one of these is uh, a bit of a boundary. We're gonna talk about boundaries a little later too. But you notice something different about this boundary? It's way bigger, way bigger, yeah. So if these guys are fences, this one needs to be the wall of China, okay? <laughs> it needs to be really thick, really heavy, right? Because this, if this is working well, all of this other stuff's gonna work really, really well. But if this is not working well, this stuff, you're gonna have problems, okay? And life's gonna be very, very stressful for you. Can anyone ever have an, ex can anyone identify with this at all? Yes, yes. okay, <laughs> right. So the idea is you are in the center and like, like we're saying, you fill yourself up, you, take your, you make yourself a priority, you look after yourself, and it doesn't mean that you ignore people or ignore responsibilities or your family, but in, when it comes to priority, you have to be number one, okay? I'll give you an example. How many people have flown in the last two years, flown on a plane? Okay, traveling group, I like it. Okay, what does the... What does the flight attendant say when you're, when you're flying with somebody who needs help, like a young child or somebody or an older person, yeah. when the masks come down? What's that? Put your mask on first. But that's terrible. No, it's not. No, why not? You can't help anybody else if you have a right. mask on. Right. So <laughs> I was talking about this, preparing this, this same talk a few years ago. My, my daughter was about five. And I, I said, okay, well, what, what do you think about this? I, her name's Ayanna. I said, what do, you, what do you think about this, Ayanna? Like, should you put your own mask on first or should you, I think you should help the other person. What do you think? And she says, no, duh, dad. You got to put your own mask on first. Otherwise, you have two dead people, right? <laughs> and I said, okay, my five-year-old gets it. So how come it took me so long to get it? But yeah, you got to put your own mask on first because if, you, if you're struggling and you're trying to help somebody else and you lose consciousness, then you're going to die and you can't help the person, so they're gonna die, okay? 
Same thing in lifeguarding. If you, you know, your number one thing is to stay alive. It's not to save the other person. You got to stay alive. So if the other person starts to drown you, you got to kind of knock them out, pull them back or let them drown and then pull them back and then revive them. Okay. You can't go down with the ship. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so it's actually not selfish. It's actually responsible to look after yourself. If you have people who are counting on you, so, so let me go back to our little thing here. So people at work are counting on you, your, your clients are counting on you, but also, you know, kids are number two. So your kids are counting on you. <laughs> I've seen what happens when parents aren't available. Either they die or they leave or they're like too depressed or they're not able to connect with their kids. It's very, very damaging to the kids and your clients suffer too. Okay. So the me is extremely important here. You have to look after yourself in order to look after other people. It's very, it's responsible. You're too important not to. And your, your mission in life is too important not to be your fully, your best self when you give to the, your clients and the people you care about. Make sense? Okay, so <clears throat> next thing out here, partner. Now, so it's really popular sometimes to think, oh, well, I've got to, you know, I've got to put my spouse or my partner first or whatever, right? But here's what happens. The truth in life is that people will, even people you love, will continue to take and will, you know, the people will treat us as bad as we allow them to treat us. And this is an unfortunate truth, okay? So we can't really, we can't put someone else in the middle. You know, you may, you may have seen this happen with some people. It's like, you know, I, I put you through school, I sacrifice for you, I do everything for you, and then what happens? The person leaves, right? Or the, uh, the person who's done all the sacrificing tries to keep them in the relationship or whatever, right? And so they start getting really nervous or, or whatever around anything that happens. And it's just an ugly relationship. It's not fun for anybody, okay? because the partner is just taking, and this is the system you guys set up, and so they keep taking, okay? But I wanna do a little thought experiment with you, okay? So think about a time when either you were or you can imagine being really well-fed. Maybe you're on vacation, you're well-rested, you're having a nice time. Just kind of imagine that for a few moments. I see some smiles, that's awesome. <laughs> So, in that scenario, from that position with how you're feeling when you can imagine that, do you think you'd make a better or worse partner? Way better. Way better. <laughs> way better. Why way better? Happy. Happy. Relaxed. 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 No stress. Present. Present. Present's a good one. Yeah. Patient. Yeah. Probably more creative. Humorous. Right? Okay. So now just imagine if your partner was doing the same thing. <coughs> if they were looking, if they took responsibility for looking after themselves as well. What kind of, rela what kind of partner would they be? Amazing. Yeah, amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, you got to drag them here, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and what kind of relationship would you have? Incredible. incredible. Exactly. An incredible relationship. And, and all from being selfish, right? All really being responsible because they're looking after themselves, they're taking responsibility for themselves, you're taking responsibility from yourself, you're not trying to get them to take responsibility for you, and they're not trying to get you to take responsibility for them. You're each responsible for your own happiness. You are responsible for, for, for meeting your own needs in a healthy way without interfering with somebody else meeting their needs. So all of a sudden you got this really roaring relationship. In Mexico. In Me well, sure, <laughs> of course, not in Alberta. Right? <laughs> right. In Mexico, right. <laughs> What kind of parents do you think you'd make? <coughs> awesome parents, right? Because now you're both present. You have that rich relationship with your partner. And you know, one of the things that really helps kids feel secure is to know that mom and dad love them, or love them, but also love each other, okay? So when you can reduce the conflict between mom and dad, even if you're not physically together anymore, they, they benefit from that, okay? So you now have, you know, your family is really well looked after. You got this nice boundary around you guys. What kind of relationships are you going to have with your family and friends? Better or worse? Better. Better. And what's going to happen Monday morning when you have to go to work? 
right? Yeah, exactly. You're going to jump out of bed. You're ready to go. You're going to love your work or you're going to look at your work directly and objectively and say, ah, this job sucks. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. Let me look for something else. But you'll have all this stuff backing you up to help you get there. Okay? So I'd like you with your partners, groups of twos or threes, okay, take about five minutes and discuss this and see if this makes sense and come up with uh, maybe two examples of how this does work in your life or could work in your life and maybe one or two questions. Okay, so take about five minutes and do that with your partners, please. Thank your partners, please. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so what did we come up with? What are some thoughts? Let's start with, uh, this group seem really active, so let's start with you guys over here. <laughs> well, I think, I think for me, um, when we talk about me being in the center of everything, it's, it was very cultural, um, very Christian upbringing. You don't put me in the center. That's mm -hmm. very selfish. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a real struggle to put me there. Okay, I just want to pause you here. Anybody identify with that at all? Okay, I was, I was brought up very, very uh, fundamentalist as well, so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, and then working with your partner and, and trying to get alignment, trying to get uh, an agreement that it's healthy for me to be there, yeah. it's healthy for you to be there, yeah. and, and to find that. Yeah, it is, it's a bit of a struggle. And, you know, one of the things that really helped me was, you know, when I actually read the New Testament, um, it's, it showed that you know Jesus went out and always communed for himself. He looked after himself first in the morning, even before he started his ministry. He went out for 40 days and was in the desert kind of getting his head together before he started his ministry, right? So there's, the, the, even within the Bible, even within Christianity, even though that's not sort of cultural, but within sort of the doctrines of it. What's that verse? <coughs> I want to write it down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it is, but I mean, you read the Bible, I mean, especially, you know, like the, the Gospels, it talks about that's what he does, right? He went out and communed with the Father before he went out and did his thing that day, but also went to the, went, you know, before he started ministry, he, was, he went and collected himself, right? Moses, the same thing in the Old Testament was, you know, the kind of the wilderness experience, just 40 years in the wilderness and the burning bush and all that other stuff, right? So, but yeah, culturally, we, we all come from that... Protestant work ethic sort of idea in our culture, whether we're religious or spiritual or not, that's in our culture. And so there's this idea of, you know, nose to, well, shoulder to the plow, nose to the grindstone, keep going, you know, push through, and there's value in work and all this other stuff, right? Yeah, so it, it is, it's, it's a struggle for many, many people. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, any other things from this group? Yeah, it's true, and yeah, and, and it does it does affect you no matter what what age you are, right? And that that sense that the family has has sort of made you that go-to person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh man, okay. But it is really you know you can't just like the you know the airplane you can't help them unless you can help yourself. So it is actually really responsible for you to say no sometimes, or and I'll, you know we're going to talk about how to do that well in a little bit. But to say no sometimes, I can't do this for you. I love you, I care about you, but I need a break. You know, is there somebody else going to help? Because that is really important. Yeah, thank you. Anything else from your group? Um, I guess I'll speak because I was one of these people. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess it all started when I went to school in, in Nanaimo there. Mm -hmm. I was there by myself, nobody else there. So I had a lot of time to work on me. Mm -hmm. I was there for four years, and it was right after high school, and my high school and childhood was a little chaotic with divorced parents, separating parents, on and off parents. Mm -hmm. And um, 
siblings, the trouble sibling that gets all the attention, and the good one just sits in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and like a couple of events even at school that kind of reminded me that I need to take care of myself. I need to learn how or what things I can do to take care of myself when you know you have a bad day or if you start realizing you're starting to get tense and and yeah, with like those things going to the gym, even doing what I love, which was surprisingly homework. And <laughs> <laughs> You're a great student. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Just the university. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and then, like I said to Amanda, um, my husband, he's, he's an only child. He's not a spoiled brat, but I mean, mm-hmm. he knows how to take care of himself, mm-hmm. too. So we make a good team because we both take care of ourselves first. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just right on great thank you I really appreciate you you know, kind of being the example for this because uh, and especially so young because a lot of people kind of figure this out midway or later do you know what I mean it's like after they've gone through some stuff and had some bad relationships or whatever or you know burnt themselves out a couple times right um, you know and figure out okay so something has to change and by the way I still struggle with this I was telling telling uh, you know Leroy and Jill earlier I got my own psychologist, by the way, that I see and I you know, talk to this week because I need to work on myself too <laughs> because I still have this pull to overwork or overgive or you know, not, to, not to do this, even though this is my thing that I came up with and I, I know it works, but you know, the old way just kind of sneaks in sometimes. So if you can get it at such a young age, that's awesome. And if you can teach your kids at this age, also awesome. And they can teach their kids. Imagine how far those ripples can go, you know? So thank you for sharing, appreciate that. What about the group back here? Um, Talking about the center, I've got a partner who is totally in the middle, period. So it doesn't work out so well for me because he is so self-centered, but in a negative way, not Mm -hmm. in a positive way, wrapped up that his priority is work and everything else but me and my life, Mm -hmm. and that's where I sit. So for me, and I've been trying, I've done lots of reading, and I've gone off the edge recently, Mm -hmm. and I struggle because I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, here I am trying to get all this, what we're talking about Mm -hmm. here, and I haven't got somebody that's working with me, because he sits in the center constantly, and it's always all about him. Right. So, frustrating. Yeah, yeah. And not not communicating, I'm trying to work on it, work on it, work on it, but he's in the middle, by himself, basically. Right, exactly. He doesn't have the money. He doesn't have anybody else here. He's taking up the whole graph, right? He's taking and up the whole graph. Yeah, yeah. And and so that's not that is not what I'm talking about. The healthy, you know what I mean? The healthy part. <laughs> I'm sharing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think you're alone. Like, okay, so like other people either know somebody like this or have experienced this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it really is, you know. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, this way of living, when you actually start to look at this, this is really not for the weak of heart, because when you start to look at this and you start to really get this, a lot of stuff shows up for you. And you can kind of see that, oh, this hasn't been working very well or isn't working well. But a lot of people don't know it's supposed to work differently. They only know what they know. We, we only know what we know. And if this is all we've known, or this is you know, how our culture is raised us or our family or whatever, it's very difficult to even see that there are other options. But there are other options. So part of, being, part of having good boundaries is assertiveness and asking for what you want when it's appropriate. And if, if your partner or the people in your lives, your um, business partners or your clients or your kids or whatever, they're not giving it to you, then something has to be done that has to be addressed. Otherwise, it's just going to continue. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's very difficult and, and really, it really is about a healthy me. So taking responsibility for your own needs, but not ignoring everybody else's needs or, or worse yet, stepping on other people to get your needs met. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that, Heather. Anybody else in that corner? Um, well, Ellen and I were probably both on the same page, but we use things like work or whatever to avoid looking after ourselves or, <laughs> or it, it causes us to look to not look after ourselves and for me I use my kids and my husband th- and I do things for them and I'm all involved in their stuff 
and I don't know if I use it to avoid looking, working on myself mm -hmm. or, or not because uh, I do a lot of things for them that they could be doing for themselves. So. Mm -hmm. And I realize that it's probably not good for them. It's not. <laughs> You're right. a 15 year old. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, so thank you for sharing that. That's a, that's a, it takes a lot of guts to share that. Because, yeah, because a couple things will happen here. One, our job as parents is to set the kids up to be happy, healthy, successful, well-functioning members of society. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> was just me, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, so the, the, the idea then is our homes have to reflect reality. Got a little mini microcosm of reality, okay? If, well, I, I don't know what anybody else's reality is, but when I go out into the real world by myself, stuff, people aren't doing stuff for me. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? And they're not anticipating my needs and doing everything so I don't have to do anything. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So it really does make a big difference in terms of how they're prepared to go out on their own, okay? That's one. The second thing is, and this is a little bit more scary even, <clears throat> when you think about communication, there's no time that we're not communicating. Would you guys agree to that? Yes. Yeah. Even when we're sitting still, even when we're not talking, we're still communicating something. What do you think you might be subtly communicating to the kids when you're doing everything that they can do? They're not competent to do it all right. the time. Right, they, they're not competent, or you don't believe in them, or whatever, right? Or that you, if you don't take care of yourself, that you don't have any self-worth, so you're... Right. I think it's totally important to show that you do prioritize yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I'm not trying to pick on you here, Susan, you know, you, you know what I mean? No, okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, everybody... Every, everybody's yeah, done it, that, I've, yeah. I've done it. <laughs> do, do you yeah. see what I'm saying? But, but yeah, we, we send that message that we don't trust them. And that they, they sort of, they get that. They get that and that, that builds into their self-esteem and their self-image. And then that becomes a little bit of a handicap for them when they go out on their own, okay? The other part of that is kids do what they, kids learn what they live, not what we teach them. If I can sit down and teach my kids a bunch of stuff and then I turn around and do whatever, they're going to do whatever I do. <laughs> they're not going to do what I told them, right? Have anybody else had that experience at all in life who's had kids? Right, okay, right. So... We are the example for them as well. So it's really, really important that we show them that it's okay to take some time for ourselves. It's okay to sleep or go to the gym or, you know, say no to their needs sometimes or whatever because, you know, we need to look after ourselves. If, if I'm tired, like last night, my kids are into basketball now, so they wanted me to come out and play. Uh, and I wanted to play with them because I like basketball too, but I was really hungry. I was working all day. So I said, you know what? I got to eat. You guys go out and play. I'm going to eat. I'll come out after. I've trained them enough now <laughs> that they were okay with that, so they didn't complain too much. But they went out and they had a good time. I ate. I took some time. I got myself together. Then I went out and played. I was, much, I was a much better play partner <laughs> because I had food and I'd taken some time for myself than if I just, oh, yeah, I got to do it for my kids. I got to get out there. And, I, and I've done that before. I've done that, and it turns to crap pretty fast because <laughs> like, I'm not I'm miserable. I'm impatient. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so we really have to think about, you know, those other messages we're sending our kids by doing stuff for them. Now, here's the, here's the other problem with this, though, is that our job as parents is to launch our children, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. If we invest our identity in anything, other than ourselves, whether it's a job, whether it's the kids, whether it's the marriage, whether it's whatever, you know, a certain, uh, certain position at work. If those things tend to change, and if they change, we are left with that. Who's heard of the empty nest syndrome? <laughs> Who's experienced the empty nest syndrome? <laughs> right, okay. right, it's like, you know, the kids are supposed to go, okay? But if we don't have any identity outside of mothering or fathering or, or whatever, that, that is subtly scary, that's unconsciously scary to us. And so sometimes we might not meaning to, but we might sabotage that. Keep them a little small, keep them around longer. Okay? So, you know, it's, it's really something we have to think about as we look at this model. And like I said, it's not for the weak of heart, because this takes a lot of guts to change the way that things are done before. And, you know, one of the things I suggest is if you're ready to change stuff, 
you sit down with your family and say, hey, listen, I'm, I realize this is how it's, we've been playing the game so far. We need to change the rules. So I realize this is what's been happening, but we need to do it this way now. How do you guys feel about that? And it really doesn't matter because you have to change it anyway, <laughs> but you know, just at least talk to them. Does that make sense? So thank you so much for sharing. That's a, that's a, that's a tough situation, so thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I was looking more at uh, my husband. Mm -hmm. um, just to just give you a smidgen um, of me, I was married at 45. Mm -hmm. I met my husband when I was 40. I was never married before, and I had no children. So for me to get married, I could cry, was very touching for me because I got married later in life. Mm -hmm. And I realized, I'm going to cry, that I have not given my husband what I want to give him. Mm -hmm. He is, I put him here a second, he's not. I said to him once, he says I yell too much at him because I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. I work 70, 80 hours a week. Wow. That's what I work, I work seven days a week. Generally 10 hours a day, sometimes 12. So this is why I'm here because of my great friend Ellie. Mm -hmm. I have to figure my life out. But I remember when listening to this about my partner, I remember my husband said I yelled at him too much and I said, I yell at you because I love you. The day I don't yell at you is the day I don't want to be with you. And then I thought, that's me. I'm taking out all this stress on him because it makes me feel better to yell because I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't need to yell at him. My husband is the kindest man in the world. He'll do anything for anybody. I, I was saying that things just go off his back. And I'm thinking, I, I need to do that. Because we were talking about how much we take out on our spouse. And it just made me very much aware. I, I need to preserve this. I, I did, I've been married for five years. I need to preserve this. This is what I want for my retirement. I want to be with him. And we were talking about how much we yell <laughs> or take things out on mm -hmm. our husband. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, thank you for sharing that. And what, 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 looking at this model, why do you think that might be? I'm sorry. Look, L looking looking at, what, at this whole why system here. No, no. Why do you think you yell? Why do you think you? Oh, I'm so stressed. Right. So I'm it's so it's <laughs> it's this stuff, right? Yeah. I, I'm at that uh, breaking. Yeah, that and burnout. That's why I need to yeah. figure that out. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Because and, and so many people, and we don't even know this is a problem, right? We because of our culture and the way we've been raised and just kind of brought up, we do things because we think they're like reasonable or whatever. You know, the classic is, you know, you see people. They get to a certain age, and it's like, okay, well, you know, how come you're not settled down yet? You know, you got to get married, or you got to get engaged, or get a steady boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay, so people go and do that. Then, okay, well, you know, when are you guys going to tie the knot? Okay, so they get and do that. Oh, when are you guys going to buy the house? Okay, when are you going to do that? When are you going to get a steady job? Okay, they do that. When are you going to have kids, right? You, you know the progression, okay? And a lot of people just kind of fall into that without any real thought or sense of choice in the matter, and they're not invested. They're just doing the right thing thinking that that's going to bring them happiness and the problem is <laughs> when you do even if they're even if those things are good none of those things are bad but if they're not your things and you don't want to do them and you don't know why you're doing them then you you don't have the same benefit from them and then after you know five years ten years twenty years you're tired you're pissed off you're you're, you're sick you're whatever and you don't know why but you're irritable or you're not sleeping well or you got some health problems or you know the relationship's not good or, or whatever you're drinking too much okay but it's all because we've never been taught to actually think about this stuff make a conscious deliberate decision to look after ourselves and take responsibility for our own wellness and well-being and, and happiness and then then we can be <laughs> we can be the partner that your partner deserves like if we want good relationships we have to be somebody that is invested. We have to have something to bring to the relationship too, right? So yeah, absolutely. So when we did the little visualization before, when you're thinking about feeling fulfilled and happy and well rested, that's kind of the person you want to be mm -hmm. for your husband, right? Yeah, but exactly. I, for me, I was married to my work, right? Uh, like uh, 40 years mm -hmm. before I met him. I mean, yes, I uh, had relationships, but my life was my work, right? right? So right. that's kind of been... And I enjoy my work. Yep. I do, but I have to change that and yep. make him the priority. <laughs> well, well, keep yelling that. <laughs> a, a, a priority, right? We a got, priority. Yeah, we got to switch these yes. around, right? Because yes. you still have to be the priority. And by the way, it's not. It really is not. 
moving him from way out, he, in, you know, orbiting this somewhere, right, to the center. It's not about that. It's moving him to the right place. Mm -hmm. It really is not switching out people and, and things in this model. It's actually putting them in the right categories and right priorities. That's really what works. Anything else is going to fall apart. Okay. So the first thing is, you know, you got to look at you, yeah. so that you can have more joy for yourself. Then naturally you will treat him better. Because I tell you, if you try to treat him better and you don't change anything else in your life, you'll just become more angry at him, more resentful. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Okay. The one thing I got out of it is just um, trying to figure out what will make you happy. You know, what, how, how do I want to spend my me time? And mm -hmm. what is it that's going to, to do it for me? And, um, and making it important enough that it happens. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, having the discipline and the, the, the guts to go and do the stuff once yeah. you figure out what that is. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and because for so many years, you know, I put everything out, everyone else, everything right. else first. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so they, I, I don't know if they still have this, but a few, probably about 20 years ago now, I was reading an article in Time, and they actually had, uh, in Midtown Manhattan, they, they built this daycare for executives. Right? You, you, you heard that? Yeah. Okay. And they even have, now they have like sleep rooms and all kinds of different things like that, right? So what the daycare was, was all these stressed out executives would go there and they had like big tricycles and like big blocks and huge sleeping bags and give them juice and cookies and you know, people spent a ton of money to go there to, to, to be kids, but learn how to play, okay? To unwind and to, to kind of feed themselves. And the companies are paying for this because they know that when they come back to work, they're going to be actually sharper and better. Okay, so yeah, yeah. If you've done this for a long, if you've done the other thing for a long time, it's going to take some time to kind of figure out eh, what do I like, what's fun for me, what 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 does enjoyment look like, and also who am I at the deeper level? Because you can't. Most of us have been taught to identify or um, uh, identify ourselves with our work or our spouse or our kids or whatever. None of those things will work. I mean, they're they're roles you fill. But who you are is you. You're deeper than that. You're much more important than that. Okay. So yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. What about you guys? Michael? I think that's tricky too. I don't know. As an entrepreneur, I find it hard sometimes to separate me from work mm -hmm. because it's such a big part of my identity. Mm -hmm. So, like when I am switching my kids to my partner, like work feels like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, so let me thank you for that. How many people either run their own business or work from home or, okay. How many people have like, like actual jobs you actually go to nine to five, somebody pays you? How many people do that? <coughs> One, two, three, okay. So the majority, so, so there's, there's, there's a, there is a big difference, okay? Because when you have the external structure of work, it actually can help you be a little more balanced if you do that right. If you don't let your boss like run over you or whatever, right? because you know, it ends at a certain time, it starts at a certain time, you know what I mean? When you're working from home, you could just work. Your work is everywhere, it's in the kitchen table, it's in the living room, it's in your bedroom, it's everywhere, okay? So the trick for entrepreneurs, business owners, people who work out of their home, is to physically set aside a space to work and also set office hours. If you don't do that, it's gonna, your work's going to bleed over everything, okay? And then it's really hard to, to separate it and separate yourself from your work. So setting office hours and, you know, let your family know during this time, this is what i got to do. You know, if you got kids at home and you're working at home, you know, during this time, mommy's got to work, you play, you know, and, and but it, after this, this is then I'm all yours, okay? There was a study, <clears throat> well, actually, it was a news story, so in... I think it was in Vancouver this happened. There were a bunch of like older buildings, older abandoned buildings and stuff like that, right? And they started to clear these buildings out and um, you know, kind of build, renew the downtown. What they found was when they started tearing, every time they tore down a building, the emergency rooms in that area of the city would have this spike in heroin overdoses. And it's like, somebody looked at this correlation, I don't know how they figured it out, but it was awesome. So they figured out this correlation. It's like, what, what's going on here? So what they figured out was that a lot of the addicts were using the abandoned buildings as their places to shoot up. 
So when they tore down the building, they had to find a new place to shoot up. So it wasn't that there was high, like, you know, um, stronger heroin or anything like that on the streets. What happened was when the, when the addicts got to their familiar place, their body started to prepare to take the drugs. Once the familiar place was gone, they took the same amount of drugs, but their bodies weren't ready, and they started to OD. Okay? That's how powerful, that's how powerful our minds are. So, if you have your work spread out on your bed, have your work spread out on your kitchen table, have your work spread out in your living room, where, where do you have your time? Where is your mind? Do you see what I'm saying? Some people have a hard time sleeping. It's because they do everything in their bed. They, they watch TV, they do their taxes, they, you know what I mean? They argue with their spouse, they do everything. Then when it comes time to sleep, your body doesn't know what to do with that. What are we doing here today? You, know, you see what I'm saying? So something as simple as physically setting up a space to work, or even like a special hat you wear when you go to work. It's like, okay, my work hat's on now, okay, here I go, right? That prepares you to be in the right mindset for work. When you're done, you take it off, gets you out of that mindset. That can really help, okay? Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Anybody else? I feel like we made each other feel justified for <laughs> picking other things first because our end goal was to be together traveling. So right now we have to put work first, right now we have to put this first because we have a goal. Mm -hmm. That's what we kind of did for each other. We basically so. just enabled each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to go for reminding, we're, we're recognizing it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for admitting that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what, honestly, there are going to be times when we're a little bit out of balance, and totally, okay. But if we understand that that's what we're doing and why we're doing it, we can adjust. But here's the thing, okay, and I've, I've actually had this experience. You, you kind of know, intellectually you know, it's like, okay, well this is what's healthy, I'm going to do this, this is what a healthy structure looks like. You know, and as soon as I'm done this crisis, I'm going to invest and, you know, kind of do this healthy thing. So I'll do this crisis and then I'll go over here and do this. So I do the crisis, and then I go over here and do this, and then the crisis comes up, and I start, okay, well, as soon as I've done this crisis, I'll go over here and I'll do that. So I do this crisis, and I go over here. Well, then another crisis comes up. You start, see what I'm saying? And before you know it, your way, of, your way of life is the crisis, right? It's putting out the fires, okay? Or, or the goal-oriented stuff, right? And nothing wrong with setting goals, perfect thing to do, but you really have to figure out what's gonna be more efficient in me getting to my goals. Okay, how, you know, how do I do this well and still say, stay sane? Um, so this is a true story. Uh, I come from the Caribbean, and um, give me a second here. So <clears throat> I was born on an island called Antigua, but I was, you been there? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I lived, my, my family lived in another island which was close by called Montserrat, okay? Montserrat is a volcanic island and it's been blown up for the last probably 15, 20 years, okay? They used to think it was like dormant and nothing was going to happen. So a small island, I think it was 11 square miles, so a lot of people leave and it was, a, it was a part of the British Empire at one point, so Commonwealth, a lot of people went to England. So these are actually cousins of mine. So. The, the family, the husband and wife, moved to England. They were living in London, and they were sacrificing. They say, okay, you know what, we're going to work, we're going to do all this stuff, we're going to save money, and when we retire, we're going to go back home, build this nice house, and live on the mountain, and everything's going to be fine, and look at the beach, and everything's going to be wonderful. So they lived in this little apartment in London, and they sacrificed, and they worked, and they sacrificed. Kept sending money back home to the island to build their house, right? So, <laughs> one day, when they're getting close to retirement, the husband says, okay, I'm going to go back, see how the house is coming on. He goes back to look after the house. While he's there, the wife is walking across the street, gets hit by a bus, and gets killed. Okay? That was her retirement. She was done. He comes back to bury his wife to take care of her, and the mountain blows up. Buries the house. Right. Okay? So... I understand the planning, but you got to get some along the way too. That makes sense. You have to beat yourself along the way. Absolutely. Not make that your end goal, because so many people lie, lose their lives 
so quickly. Absolutely. And you work so hard for that end goal, but really, that end goal isn't there. Well, even the whole concept of retirement, even like people had, like companies had the whole, oh, we'll, we'll pay for you through, for the rest of your life because they know it's going to be like six months. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They're, they're not, they're not going to have to pay for very long, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, we really need to get some along the way. So have the goal, absolutely. But understand <coughs> it's, it's, it's efficient to get a little bit along the way so you can have enjoyment as you do it. Okay? Thank you for sharing that. Well, <coughs> always manipulate work until it went really well mm -hmm. and generally it did and that's where a great deal of satisfaction and all kinds of things came from but um, I my husband passed away four years ago so again going into retirement as we were talking about now looks very different mm -hmm. um, my kids have all left home and are happy and healthy and so now for me it's uh, so then it's just me, it's just me orbiting around and I shared with these gals that it's, for me it's starting just to say no and uh, I <coughs> suggested that perhaps I need to get cue cards that I can have dangling from a mirror in my car no. yeah. <laughs> and in my office yeah. um, about saying no, I, I'm going to start today, I have a client that I'm supposed to call back and I'm going to say that no, I cannot take on her work. I really awesome. am way too busy and have been way too busy for 25 years actually. Yeah. And uh, I hate the busy word, it just pisses me off. It's not <laughs> that people use it, but that I use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it's, I, I totally get what you're saying. It's just multiplying that. Mm -hmm. Making that switch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's really natural to, if you feel like you're out of control somewhere else, to look for some control somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's really natural, it's actually really healthy, it helps us cope, okay? But we have to recognize that we're doing what we're doing, and if we're doing it because we don't feel in control somewhere else, then we need to maybe look at that, and maybe address what we're out of control with, and so we can actually get, in, get a, a better sense of control instead of just focusing on what's already going good because then our life shrinks, right? If we just stick with what we know and what's already going good, it's like after a while you don't try new stuff, right? So it, it does take a lot of guts, so thank you for that. Appreciate that. Okay. I think that would be the word that, um, as everybody's been sharing, that would kind of put this all into perspective for me. I is that word control. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I lately have been joking about it because I tend to be a control freak, <laughs> and I like things done a certain way. But I'm realizing that I actually need to let go um, mm -hmm. because it's actually it's not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And the whole play on you know, being selfish and then having to look at the, the good word of being responsible. And I would say that would be what I would kind of go, well, I'm controlling because I want to be responsible. Right. But it's actually... You control all this stuff, yeah. Unhealthy because <laughs> I need to control right. me. And right. So that, that was, that's good. That was a good kind of realization of, okay, the, that play on words of, mm -hmm. you know, I need to take responsibility, but I act, it's actually me that I need to take responsibility right. of yep. and not try and control my husband or my children. Right. That's, that's, that's a huge realization. Thank you for sharing that. I'm a retired teacher, so mm -hmm. finding me, because teachers identify themselves as teachers mm -hmm. first and, and you are very much your job. Mm -hmm. So it, it's finding me in the circle and, and finding out who I am mm -hmm. versus being a teacher or a mother. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Rediscovering that or discovering for the first time maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Go, going back to, thank you for that, going back to the, the control thing for a second, um, I've yet to meet somebody who's felt they have their life in control, who's depressed, anxious, burnt out, unhappy. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's a really, really good investment when you take some time and look after yourself because then everything else goes better. And you, you, you actually make more money. I mean, I, I, like I, sometimes I'm a little nervous to make that claim because where does the money come from? But literally, I've worked with clients for a number of years and they've, many have come back and said, you know, if I didn't do this, I wouldn't have got this contract, I wouldn't have got this job, or I wouldn't have, you know what I mean, or I lost money here, or I'd have been gambling in the way, or I'd been drinking in the way, or whatever. So it really does give you more success like by external standards. 
but I saw this movie. I don't know. It's an older movie now. <laughs> it, how many people watch Saturday Night Live? A couple people. Okay. <laughs> so there was a character, Stuart Smalley. It was an old character. Yes. Okay. You so you know. Um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. That's the guy. So he had a movie. It said Stuart Smalley saves his family, and he had the best line in this movie. So. This whole time he's struggling, he's really codependent, and he's running around trying to fix everybody and look after everybody and does all this other stuff. And the picture, the, the picture for the poster is this guy struggling under the weight of the world, right? And that's, that's you know, Stuart Smalley saves his family. And he says, at the end of it all, I finally figured out it's easier to put on a pair of slippers than it is to try to carpet the whole world. I said, brilliant. <laughs> easier to put on a pair of slippers than it is to try to carpet the whole world. Okay, so exactly right. Look after yourself. Don't try to make everything else cushy for you, and you'll be all right. Thank you for sharing that, guys. You guys. I found when I was trying to do this was uh, I just kept asking, like, how do I get more me time? Like, mm -hmm. my, my situation, like, my partner takes a great deal of my time. And then that kind of coincides with both is that I feel like if I can build my spouse's confidence or their esteem, they won't have to rely on me so much to pump them up and mm -hmm. to give me a little bit more ability to be, do me. Mm -hmm. Let them let me out of the house more or trust me to go do whatever I want instead of always having to be side by side and like, hey, so I, that's for me, I just, I just was trying to battle with how to get more mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. And I got and my... That's not his fault. That's my fault. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. So you saw what we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's because, yeah, I don't get me time mm -hmm. at all. And he's seen it. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so that's definitely like my fault. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and my frustration is I'm her business partner. Uh -huh. And I see this and I'm the other me in the room. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's taken me a long time to get to To figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's taken. 12 years. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I'm really emotional now. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 it takes a lot of work. It does. And it's not easy work. And it, like, you know, I don't want to undersell or like oversell it or whatever. It's hard work. It's hard to say no. It's hard to change those patterns of being everything for everybody or being the go to person. It's hard. And, you know, even though it's like it feels awful to, to have all that pressure on you sometimes. It also feels good. You get all this, like, you know, praise for it. And, oh, you're so, well, thank you so much. And you know what I mean? You get all this stuff for it. So it's really difficult. But just to directly address what you're dealing with here with your spouse. Okay, so I'm going to challenge you a bit. <laughs> so you're actually thinking about it backwards. What you need to do is start looking after yourself. And what that does, it enables her to see a good model for this. And it gives her permission to also start looking after herself. Tell her what's going on, obviously, right? I mean, don't just like, okay, well, I'm going golfing for the next month. You know what I mean? It's like, no, you know? Tell her, tell her what's going on, but, but do that because it, as hard as you try, you're never going to be able to build up her confidence because that's not your job. That's not your role. She has to do that. She has to take responsibility for that. Your job is to love, accept, validate, and support. That's it. That's all of our jobs, by the way, with our spouses and our kids. That's it. We can't grow them. We can't change them. We can't fix them. <laughs> Love, validate, accept, and support. Probably a different order, but <laughs> that's basically it. Okay? Because, you know, when, when she's having a hard time, you can understand that she's having a hard time. When she's feeling insecure, you can understand she's having, feeling insecure. It's not your job to make her feel secure because you can't. Like, you, like, it's impossible. But you can understand and validate her, how she feels, and know that it's real for her, even though it might not be real in reality. It's real for her. And just by having, just by you listening and, and, and understanding how she feels and not kind of freaking out or trying to change her, because, again, the subtle message is you're not good enough. Do you know what I mean? And that, I know that's not how you feel, but that's how she might feel when you're trying to, like, fix her. Do you know what I mean? So when you're not fixing and you're just accepting, that actually builds the self-esteem. That actually helps her to feel, oh, ah, okay, I can just be me and I can be this hot mess for right now, but it's okay, my husband loves me, and I can, then I can feel free to move on and, and uh, build my own self-esteem, okay? But while you, in order to do that, 
in order to do that, you have to do this, because otherwise you'll get burnt out. Okay, because if you're always validating and loving and accepting, and you know, it's like, ah, oh, I got nothing left, yeah. right? So you have to do this. So it, it, the idea is right. It's just a little, it's a little backwards. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Anybody else here? Yeah, it's just the me time. I can't have me time. You, you can't have me time no. because. Because if I want to go shopping, my partner has to come with me. Mm -hmm. If I want to do anything. He has to come with me. Okay. So. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't go shopping. I can't buy groceries. I can't. It. Mm -hmm. It's me time. So, it's so a similar situation about yeah. the like cleanliness and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, the the idea then is to is to share this what you learned today with yeah. with him, and say, okay, you know what? We're gonna just do a little experiment. You start small because big change is gonna be scary for people, okay? So start small, and you gotta assure him that I'm not trying to leave you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's- I've been if, married 40 years. Right, <laughs> okay, but, so. well, you know, people are married 50 years and get divorced, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, but you have to assure him, listen, honey, I love you. Oh, but it all, yeah, because it hasn't always been this way, it's gotten worse right, right. now. Yeah. So, so, you know, but we need to start doing something, otherwise I'm going to implode or I'm going to start to resent you. Well, and that's it, and talking with Joe, and, that, and it's like, well, then you can book it through work time, but mm -hmm. then I feel guilty booking me time through work time. Okay, but, but that's, okay, so you guys are partners, right? Or yes. all three of your partners? Okay. Yes. You've made an agreement that that's okay to yes. do that? Then you yes. go with the agreement, okay? One of the things that I, like in all relationships, so business partners, spouses, kids, whatever, Agreements versus assumptions. Make agreements, don't make assumptions, okay? If you negotiate that and you, can, you directly and explicitly and consciously make a decision that this is okay, then it's okay. Okay, you gotta give yourself permission to do that. But, and listen, again, what I'm saying is like, it's hard to get your head around this because it is gonna feel guilty. Okay, so I want everybody, let's, let's do a little experiment here. Uh, everybody put down their, their pens and stuff like that as soon as you finish that uh, thought, and then we're going to do a little experiment. Okay, everybody's good? Okay, I'd like everybody to cross their arms, please. Okay. Everybody's good with that? No trouble doing that? Everything's good? All right, cross it the other way now. No, 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 no. Weird. How does that feel? Weird, awkward, different. It hurts. Right? It hurts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Part of the rings don't match up right, or whatever, right? Yeah, it's just weird. Right, okay. Was doing it the opposite way wrong? No. Did it feel wrong? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you get my point here? Yeah. There's stuff you're going to do that's not wrong, that's going to feel wrong because it's different. That little bit of, ew, ew this feels weird. That feeling, we tend to turn, we tend to point, we, we need to attribute it to something. So we say, oh, I must be guilty, or this is wrong, or this is weird, okay? But all it is, is the physiological response to change, okay? So again, if you cross your arms one way, then you do it the other, so, right? Because your physiology is responding to the change that you just put on it, okay? So. Your partner said it's okay, it's all good, sneak off and do some stuff for yourself during work, but it's gonna feel that way. But you know what, feel it out. Just let the feelings be and let them move through because you know in your mind that you're not doing something wrong. Eventually the feelings will catch up, but it's gonna take some time, okay? What you can do to help yourself though <laughs> is you can do little experiments or little, little uh, exercises like crossing your arms the wrong way and feeling it. And so, <sighs> okay, I'll just be with this for a little bit. Okay, now, okay, now, settle now, right? Or take a different way home every day you go home. And just to take a two extra turns or four extra turns, it's gonna give you that, that sense of difference, that sense of novelty, and then you just feel the anxiety that comes with that, and say, like, oh, okay. Uh, most of us, I, I've, I've recognized I put my right shoe on first. So I'm gonna start putting on my left shoe first and feel how weird that is, okay? <laughs> But just doing these little things, you get familiar with the little bit of weirdness, a little bit of activation that comes in, 
and you get okay with it, then the bigger stuff is a lot easier to handle. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It makes sense for everybody? Yeah. Sorry, makes sense for everybody? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't want you to fall asleep here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anything else from you guys here? No, I just, you know, 12 years I've now got myself back together. I'm not getting emotional. Um, I moved here. I've been helping for my accent. I'm not from this. <laughs> I moved here 12 years ago and a year after that I stood up for my husband so mm. I've been through a lot mm -hmm. so with that and I had a four, five year old child mm. so who's now 15 or 16 and uh, you know I haven't had a partner mm. most of this time I've been dating here and there but it's just made me me mm -hmm. you know through a lot of different situations and recently through seeing a psychologist which mm. has really helped mm -hmm. So I can see this and how well it's done for me, and I'm trying to support her. Mm -hmm. Well, the best way we can support, like I said, um, love, validate, support, accept, right? Mm -hmm. And show the example, mm -hmm. right? Show the example. Um, it's, well, it's called behavioral disinhibition. That's the, the psyche term for it. Okay, so it's like if I see somebody else doing it and they get away with it, it's like, oh, well, maybe I can get away with it too. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And so you can be the example, that role model for people. So, excellent, thank you. Um, write down this, this uh, YouTube uh, it's clip. I think it's kind of a funny clip. I use it all the time with, with couples and with families. It's called, It's Not About the Nail. Oh my gosh, I just said that just so <laughs> I said, have you seen the nail in the head? That's yeah. what he's talking about. Right, That's exactly. Good. Yes, it's, not it's, it's not about the nail. About the if nail. you go into YouTube oh and just kind of type it into the search bar, It'll show up as funny, mm -hmm. really funny, but so accurate. I was about just how show it to my 16 year old this week. I haven't had a moment to, but uh -huh. I mean, she's got a nail in her head right now. <laughs> 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 I've got 16 year olds. <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it, it really does talk about how, you know, how we communicate differently. Okay? So, <laughs> it's a fun thing. So, I want to I do a couple things with you, okay? So, we're going to go through a couple things really quickly here. If you go to your handout, and do page two and three. We'll start on page two. So it's called a self-care menu, okay? So the idea of this is, okay, so yeah, so we're gonna put ourselves first. How do we do that? What, what, what are some ways to do that, okay? Because great idea, great concept, but I don't know, what, I don't know what, how to make that work. Okay, so I come, I've come up with seven areas that you need to feed in order to feed the meat. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the areas and give you some things and you guys write notes because what I, what I laid out in the handout is actually a menu and if you write down some things that work for you in each area, that becomes your little owner's manual now. Okay, and so now it's like, okay, I'm feeling burnt out, I'm feeling tired, I'm snapping at my husband a little too much or my wife or whatever, the kids. Oh, let me check the list. Oh, I haven't done that for a while. Oh, I need more of that. Okay, I haven't done, okay, now I know what I need to do. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So, the areas are physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, social, financial, and purpose. Okay? So, we're going to go through these fairly fast because I've got a couple other things I want to do with you guys before we wrap up here today. And we only got about 40 minutes left. So, physical. What are some things we can do physically to look after ourselves? Exercise. Exercise. Eat healthy food. Eat healthy. Sleep. Sleep. I was waiting for somebody to say that. How much sleep do we need? Different for everybody. Different for everybody. Six to eight hours. <laughs> so what, what the research says is that a healthy, regular adult who's active needs about eight hours and 13 minutes of sleep, uninterrupted sleep, to be optimal. Okay. <laughs> so, right. Okay. So here's the deal with sleep. It is something that's totally undervalued in our culture, but it's extremely, extremely important. You can go to the psychologist all day. You can eat right. You can exercise. Okay. So the, the, the pillars for health, as far as I can um, identify them, sleep, exercise, diet, mindset. Okay. Sleep, exercise, diet, mindset. Of the four of them, the only, like, you can cut out some of the other ones, but you can't cut out sleep. 
If you cut out sleep or you, you sacrifice sleep, none of the other stuff works. Okay? All of them work together and they're all important, but sleep is the most important. If you, you only, your body only heals when you sleep, deeply, uninterrupted, okay? Your hormones only get replenished when you sleep. You replenish your neurotransmitters, your brain chemistry only gets replenished when you sleep. The only time any of this stuff works is when you sleep. So if you're not sleeping, you can exercise all day and it won't help you get any healthier. And by the way, if you're not sleeping, it's pretty much impossible to lose weight. You, you can't because your body is actually in fight or flight and the stress hormones, the cortisol, all that stuff make you put on weight. Okay. So, okay. So, um, I talk to my psychologist to help me sleep, right? Um, but there's, uh, if you take mini breaks throughout the day, actually, let's do a little experiment or a little activity right now. Because everyone put everything down, please. Okay, so you can leave your eyes open for this or you can close your eyes, whatever you're comfortable with. We're just going to do a little bit of grounding for about a minute, okay? So what I'd like you to do is just take a moment and feel your feet on the floor. You can feel your bum in the chair. Feel your back against the back of the chair if you're leaning against it. And not trying to change anything, not trying to relax, not trying to make anything happen or stop anything from happening. But just allow your body to be. You might notice how your breath moves. You might notice how deep it goes, where it feels smooth. You're just letting your body do what it needs to do and just noticing what's there. And you might even notice what part of your body might feel the most comfortable for you. It might even either be least painful or might be quiet or might actually feel good. Let's maybe take a moment and just see where that might be. And when you're ready, those of you who with your eyes closed can start letting a little bit of light back in. Start reorienting to the room. Okay. How many people thought they were relaxed before we started this? How many? Okay, good. Thank you. How many people felt more relaxed after or more calm? Okay, right. We get used to a certain way of being and we think it's normal, right? But it's not optimal. But this little exercise, this is just a little bit of grounding and that took like a minute and a half. It wasn't very long at all. But if you take like a minute or two, several times a day to just stop moving, just be. Most of the time our minds kind of going or we're doing stuff or we're eating lunch while we're working or whatever, right? But if we actually give ourselves permission to practice stopping, when it comes time to sleep at night, our body has a frame of reference for stopping, okay? Most of us are driving down the highway at 90 and then jamming into park at night without stopping, by the way, right? Just, right? We, we just go, go, go until we collapse. So our body has no frame of reference for what that, wh what are we doing here, okay? So if you start practicing, and what I tell people is like in the morning, you can do this before you get out of bed, do it right after breakfast. You should have a snack in the day, do it right after that. Do it at lunch, do it in the afternoon snack, do it at supper, do it before you go to bed, right? Six or seven times, that's like 10 minutes maybe out of your day, but your body now has a bunch of times when it can stop and it knows what that's like. It's like, oh, okay, I know this. And it's able to rest better when it comes time to sleep, okay? There are also like melatonin or different kind of natural things that you can use to help you um, get rest and stuff like that as well, okay? Does that work for everybody? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so sleep is very important. Sleep, exercise, right? Eating well, all that stuff. Excellent. Emotional, how do we look after ourselves emotionally? What can we do? Me time. Me time, exactly. What else? 
Talking, yes. Talking to who? Friends, family. Friends, family, anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I think journaling is also very important here. I, I, my, my psychologist told me to journal when I first started seeing her, different psychologists than I see now, but um, excuse me, I fought her for two years. I said, no, this can't help, this can't help, this can't help. <laughs> two years in, <laughs> so I started journaling, I was like, oh, this helps so much. <laughs> it's like, this is really good. And, and so now I journal all the time, and I've been journaling for about 20 years now. Okay. So it, it really, really does make a difference. And, and some of these things will hit several, several of these categories. Yoga, for instance, or exercise, depending on how you do it, hits the physical, can hit the emotional, right? Because you feel better while you're doing it. It can also hit the social if you work out with friends. You know what I mean? If it's spiritual to you, it can do, you even hit the spiritual side of things. So journaling is one of those things that crosses a lot of, it fills a lot of these categories for you, okay? I, uh, I said, you know, I talked to my own psychologist. I think talking to a professional or a coach or somebody is really a good thing because we don't have objectivity into our own situation all the time. Well, at all, really. And so having somebody else that's got our back is a healthy thing. Okay. Tiger Woods has a golfing coach, right? Michael Jordan had a basketball co coach that he hired, even though he's like one of the best basketball players ever. Okay. So it's a healthy thing. All right. Intellectually, what can we do for ourselves? Read. Read. What else? Continue to learn. Mm hmm Learning, perfect. Challenges, yep. Curiosity. Curiosity, yep. Perfect. There's a lot of like video games now that challenge your brain, like there's brain gym, there's a whole bunch of stuff, right? And actually help your brain to grow. One of the best things to help you intellectually is exercise. Um, it helps you emotionally as well. When you get vigorous exercise, they say actually like some kind of resistance training, it actually helps your brain to stay healthy. Another thing is music. Listening, but especially playing or singing. Playing especially helps your brain to grow. And um, I saw a study that said that musicians as a group tend to have a much lower rate of like Alzheimer's and age-related dementia than the general public. Because, you know, music is good. So music is really important to do. All right? What about spiritual? What are some things you can do for yourself spiritually? First of all, is spirituality the same as religion? No. What's the difference? Considering what your faith means to you. Okay. Retreat. Retreat, so it's personalizing it, right? So it's like not doing it because it's sort of the family tradition, but because it's meaningful to you. Right? So, so I think religion can be spiritual, but it's not, by, it's not defined as spirituality necessarily. I think spirituality is something different, and can, you can get spirituality from your religion, but it's got to be meaningful to you, and it's got to be uplifting and, and generous, right? So I think spirituality is, is you know, a, a sense of connectedness, connectedness with others as well as something greater, whether it's nature, whether it's God, whether it's you know, the giant potato, whatever. You know what I mean? It's just understanding that there's something more. So walking in the woods, for me, I was in the mountains a couple weeks ago. That's a spiritual experience for me. Okay, just being around these huge things that are older than I am gives me a sense of perspective. I love being in nature. Okay, meditation, prayer, spiritual practice in general, whatever that might be to you that's meaningful is also a good thing. I think we have a need for this, even though it's kind of been denied by psychology and science in different places uh, in the past, but. We're finding now that this is a, a really important need that humans have, is for that sense of spirituality and that connectedness. So don't ignore that. What about social? What can we do to fill our social need? Go with friends. Go with friends. Sports, team sports. Mm-hmm. Team sports are great. Yeah, getting out, being with people, not isolating. I sing in singing Christmas trees. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so it's spiritual and social. Spiritual, social, probably emotional. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Intellectual, because you're singing his music, right? Yeah. So it's awesome. <laughs> so does it make a difference who you hang out with, like your friends, if they're good friends or bad friends? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Makes a big difference, okay? Um, there are these neurons, these brain cells that we have called mirror neurons. Uh, how many people heard the saying, Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. Right, okay. 
So mirror neurons, that, this part of our brain, these cells in our brains, they're the only thing they do is look at the environment, look at who we were hanging out with, and try to make us like that. Okay? So that's their whole job. So if you're hanging out with negative people who have a kind of down outlook on life, who, you know what I mean, are kind of unhappy, guess how you're going to feel or how you tend to feel. Right, okay. If you hang out with positive people, people who are, you know, going places, doing things, or, you know, what, what do you tend to feel? Positive. positive. Better, right? Okay. So pay attention to who you're around. It's bad for your health to be around the soul vampires. Okay? <laughs> Suck your soul. And everybody knows who we're talking about. Hopefully you're not one of them. So, <laughs> right? Okay? And what about financial? What can we do for ourselves financially? Work harder. <laughs> <laughs> Smarter, not harder. <laughs> Budget. Budget. Work smarter. Like spending my finances. Spending? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. You know what? Spending on, because listen, treat I yourself. treat yourself. Yeah, because why else are you working? Yeah. Work, work, you know, money is a tool. It's not an end. Okay. Have to yeah, have something to look forward to. If you deprive yourself, you will binge out anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll, you'll spend it all anyway. So you might as well get a little bit along the way. Okay? But why spending, I would, I would say. One of the things that I think is really good is educating yourself about money, particularly for women. Okay? Because women in our culture, unfortunately, aren't always raised or socialized to look after that stuff or have that discussion. But really, it's important that everybody be educated about money. Okay? A um, couple of good books that I love, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's a really good book by Robert Kiyosaki. His wife wrote one called Rich Woman, which I think is really good as well. He's got, got one called Rich Kid too, so <laughs> it's really good, okay? But read, ask questions, talk to people. Money is the number one stressor of individuals. Number one cause of stress in relationships. Kids are number two, okay? so. The, it's a really, really important area, so look after that, and that's going to help you feel good. If you, start, if you start a savings program, for example, or just use a budget, all of a sudden your stress goes down because you know that, okay, I'm putting some stuff away, I'm good, right? Versus if you're, you don't know what's going on with your money, okay? So it's really important. What about purpose? I think just giving back. Okay. Like, giving back? Okay, good. Into your community or... Mm -hmm. Yep, and that can also help you with some spiritual stuff too, and some social, maybe some intellectual. What else? Just a sense of self-worth. Sense of self-worth, yeah. Especially stuff like hobbies or food that you love too. Hobbies, yeah. different things like that, yeah, yep. I think that, and you guys can argue with me on this if you want, I think we have two purposes. One, we share, like it's the same purpose for all of us, and one is individual, okay? I believe that our main, our, this, the purpose we share is that we're here to enjoy ourselves, to have fun, to be happy, okay? That's something we all, we share as humanity, okay? How we do that is our individual purpose, <laughs> is our expression of ourselves. So when we can fully express ourselves, whether it's through your work or, you know, as a, as a parent or in a community or through hobbies or sports or whatever, we can fully express ourselves, we experience joy. Like in our gifting? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Just, just living your gift, right? Or talents in, you know, in the Christian uh, mindset, you know, just working your talents. When you can fully uh, express that, we are happy. How we fully express that is different for all of us, okay? I like, to I like doing this. <laughs> so me doing this, I feel joy doing this, even though sometimes I'm nervous doing this. Right? But I feel joy being able to share. And when I do that, I also hopefully help other people. Or at least I offer help to other people. You see what I'm saying? But, you know, um, if you work for an organization and you're stuffing envelopes, if you can have joy knowing that you're helping this organization move forward because you really believe in them, even though you're stuffing envelopes, that can bring you joy. It's a sense of purpose. Okay? But that helps you to feel better. They say that seniors 
with a sense of purpose live an average of seven years longer than seniors without. And not just do they live longer, they actually enjoy those seven years more. They're healthier. So purpose is a big deal. Okay? Excellent. All right, so if we go to the next page on our handouts, we're talking about boundaries. So it's come up a lot of times about, you know, I got to say no to my clients, or I got to say no to my husband or my wife or the kids or whatever, right? So healthy boundaries, if we look at the diagram here, it, it, I, I think of them as like, a, like two fences with, double, with a double gate. So if something comes, you open the top, the front, front gate, you let it in, you analyze in that middle safety part, and if it's safe for you, if it's something is good, it's going to work for you, you can open up that second gate and let it in, okay? If it's not, you close that gate, you kick it out of the first gate, and you close that, and that's, that stays out of your life. All right? So closed boundaries, these are the people who don't, they can't be flexible, right? Excuse me. Something comes in, they, they block off all new ideas, they don't try anything new, they just shut it down, right? Most people, you, you can kind of tell when that's happening, they're not, they don't feel safe, typically, okay? But then the other problem is open boundaries, where anything comes in. That's also a problem, okay? We have a saying, we have a saying in our, in our um, industry. It says, the opposite of dysfunction is dysfunction. Okay? So the opposite of dysfunction is dysfunction. I'm too closed, I'm too closed. You're too, you, know, you need to open up. Okay, so I open wide up and let everything in. That's just as dysfunctional. So really, it's the balanced position that's, that's healthy. So we're going to work on boundaries a little bit here today. Okay, now for this one, I need you guys to get into groups of two, please. So just get, you know, try to get with your partners, and if there's somebody left over, we're gonna. Okay, everybody's got a partner. Anybody not have a partner? Yeah. Uh, no, I'll come and be a partner with somebody. Actually, one of you come up here. Be my guinea pig. <laughs> You one, sh one short? Okay, I guess you, yeah. you got off. Oh, you escaped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, this is, this is what I call the no exercise. The no exercise. All right? So, I want you to find an A and a B. Someone, who's A and who's B? Figure it out right now, please. Okay? Everybody's got them? Okay. Tell me, show me the A's. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so this, this exercise we're going to do is for 30 seconds, A is going to ask B for a favor. Okay? D nothing big. Not like a kidney. Okay? So it's like, <laughs> can I borrow your phone? Can you lend me a quarter? Do you mind giving me a ride to like Starbucks or to Tim Hortons or whatever? Something, something easily done. Okay? Who's doing that? A is asking? Okay. So B, your job is to look A in the eye and say, what do you think? No. 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 Okay? <laughs> so it looks like this. Yeah. You asked me something, Jackie. Okay, she was first. Oh, one second. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to give me a ride to work. No. I'm going to be late and I could possibly lose my job. I've been late before and I really, really need a, a ride. No. Again, no. <laughs> no. How am I going to get there? No. I need you to get there. It's just out the door. We could go together. You could come on back. No. Or head to Edmonton right there. No. <laughs> no. Okay, time out. <laughs> Very good. She's awesome. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay. But this is, that, you got to be relentless like that, by the way. Fantastic. Thank you. So, but, but B, looking, you saw what I did, looked her in the eye, no, did I say, oh, I wish I could, or no, you know what I mean, no excuses, no, okay? Now, this is not real life, this is an exercise, so you don't have to do this with all your people, but you need to know that you can have that ability. Somebody said they, that one of the most important things they learned was that no is a complete sentence, right? Okay, so everybody clear on this? Okay, so... A, are you ready? Yeah. All right. 
Go ahead and start. And stop, please, and stop. Very good, okay, switch partners. Or not switch partners, but I mean the other person. Start asking, ready? And go, please. <laughs> and stop please, stop. All right, thank your partners. Okay, so quickly, what did you guys learn? What was that experience like for you? Hard to say no. Well, it's easy to say no to some things. Okay. It's easy, but when it has to do with work and something that I personally connected to, that I want to see her succeed or I really want to help her, I don't want to touch her garbage or do certain <laughs> things, but there's some things that I would be like, no. I, I could do that. that. Yeah, right? An emotional yeah. An emotional attachment with the person or to the thing, yeah, it makes it harder. But yeah. Okay, that's the, thank you for bringing that up because a lot of people do that. No, I'm sorry, right? And we it's like the Canadian disease, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes. right? It's like, I'm not sorry. I'm no, okay? Because here's the deal. Uh, well, two things. One is if you say yes to everything, okay, when you say yes to this, you're saying no to something anyway. Usually yourself and your health and your well being and stuff like that, right? So when you say yes, you're saying no to something anyway. So you got to say no anyway. Second, if, you're, if you can't say no, your yeses don't mean anything. Okay? Your yeses mean nothing because it's always yes. So whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it, it's yes. And so if you say yes to something you don't want to do and you do it for that loved one, how long are they going to be loved and how soon are they going to be resented? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay? So yeah, did it get easier as you went along? No. Okay. Did it get easier for anyone as it went along? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I usually do this for like a minute or more, and it does tend to get easier when you practice it. Okay? It's just we're short on time here, so it was like ha half a minute this time. But it really does get easier once you practice it. But remember that crossing the arms thing we did before? It felt weird. How many people felt weird saying no? I heard a bunch of laughter, and I heard a bunch of like, oh, well, I wish I could, but uh, right? Excuses, right? Okay, so yeah, that all that is just that that energy of change. That's all it is. It's not that it was bad. It was just fun, right? It's kind of nice to just say no too, because when you have the excuse, it usually involves the little lie or <laughs> you know something <laughs> that right. you feel guilty mm -hmm. with afterwards. It's kind of liberating. Absolutely, and it's actually a powerful word. Yeah. Okay. When they teach self-defense, especially women's self-defense. When they have and you kick the guy in the big thing with the, in the nuts, right? Like they, they, you know, they, they, no, no, right? I mean, they, because it gets you in touch with your own power, right? So yeah, you have to. It, it's good. It's good to practice that. So I'd encourage you to practice that with your partners. Okay? Don't just do it here. Practice it because if you practice it, it's like doing foul shots in basketball. You're not going to do foul shots through the whole game, but when it comes time to play, your shot's better. I'm doing that. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. There you go. So, yes, yeah, so you say no a lot. No, lot, lot. no. Yeah, right. You, you don't qualify. That's right. Exactly. Okay? So, that's part of being assertive and part of having boundaries. We're going to do another, at least one more exercise, depending on how much time we have. Okay? So, this time, get you with your partners. Whoever was A last time is now B. Okay? So, this is, this is the thank you exercise. Okay? Because... Being able to accept a compliment and saying thank you is also assertive. Okay? It also feels good. It's also a way of nurturing yourself. 
All right. So, A, you're now going to look at B. Now, some of you guys know each other, which is fine. You want to give them a compliment, a le legitimate compliment, but it doesn't have to be you're a wonderful person if you don't know the person, okay? It can be nice hair, nice shoes, you got a nice smile, whatever, okay? But a legitimate compliment. B, your job is to look at A in the eyes and say, thank you. Easy, right? No, oh, you're so kind. Oh, oh this old thing. No deflecting, okay? None of that stuff, okay? You gotta look him in the eye, say thank you. Jack, I'm gonna pick on you again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give to you, okay? Jackie, I love your smile. Thank you. You got beautiful hair. Thank you. You dress so well. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so, you're welcome. <laughs> that's right. You got to hang out more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's it. All right. Clear? Clear? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Get in your groups. I'll start you off. We're going to do this for a minute. A is going first. And if you run out of things to compliment on, just say you're awesome because you're awesome. You're awesome because you got nice hair. You're awesome because you got a nice smile. You're awesome because you're, you know, I love the comment you made or whatever. But just, you know, kind of rapid fire at them. Okay? Ready? Go. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So I heard some stuff happening here. Okay. If you send something to them, you got to wait for them to say thank you. Okay, so don't just keep, like, you, they have to say thank you and then you give the next one. Okay? All right, go. All right, thank you, partners. What'd you learn? What was that like? It was very hard for us. Uh huh. Yeah, well, and that's. Yeah, totally, totally. And are emotions bad? No. No, they're emotions, right? They're, they're good, they're actually healthy. How often do we actually tell people that we appreciate them? You, you know what I mean? Not enough. How often do we actually accept appreciation when it comes our way? Not enough, okay? Do you feel, when, when you were getting all this appreciation, did it feel good? Yes. Yeah. When you were giving the appreciation, did it feel good? Yes. Right. Did it feel good to have somebody appreciate the appreciation that was coming in their direction? Yes. <laughs> okay. When you say thank you and you accept a compliment, you're actually giving a gift to the other person, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. right. How do because you teach your child to accept compliments? Like my son's only six and he does not like to be complimented. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so especially with little kids and sometimes men, Okay, because men sometimes function as little kids too, sorry guys, but too, too much emotional intensity can feel overwhelming. So you do it in little small doses, okay? So you, you know, just, you know, kind of walk up, say, hmm, nice job, walk away, right? And you know, so it's not, so, oh, nice job, baby, oh, you're so wonderful, right? You know what I mean? It's just too much, okay? So, <laughs> right. Okay, so little, little doses, okay? So I'll give you a little hint. So like with, with, with men and women, one of the things we're different with, for, for men, too much emotional intensity is overwhelming in general, okay? Uh, just how our brains are set up. So um, it, it actually puts us into, into fight or flight a little bit, and so we can, it's too much, okay? So this is a problem in couples because typically the woman, women are more comfortable with emotions and you know like throwing them around and talking and stuff like that right and men are not we're not socialized the same way plus our brains develop differently and so what happens is when too much is coming out is even too much good it can be too much and we just kind of shut down we go into fight or flight so we run away we have a fight or we turn on the tv or whatever the break in emotional connection for the woman is activating is overwhelming and that puts them into fight or flight okay so they feel the, con the breaking connection. So what do they do? What do you guys do? If you feel mad. get mad, you pursue more, right? Mm -hmm. More emotions, right? Not less emotion. So more emotion comes. We feel freaked out. So we run or fight or do whatever because, oh my goodness, emotion, ah, right? And so we got this little arms race that happens. And this is why things blow up like that. Have you been fighting 
spying on us? <laughs> <laughs> we're spying on everybody. <laughs> so, you, you, know, you see what I'm saying? So for your little boy, be gentle. Like, you know, so, hey, nice, nice job, son. Walk away, right? I was like, oh, okay. And he takes that in and you give him a little more, okay? But the other way to do it is to accept in yourself, all right? So how many people feel that they're pretty good with that now? Okay? Yes. <laughs> we need one more before we, before we end. Ellen's smiling because she, she loves this one. <laughs> I'm going to pick on you, Ellen. <laughs> okay. So this one, this is, and actually, are you guys okay if we go like five minutes over? Yes. You, you got, everybody's okay? Okay. Okay. So this one's called, because that one's like, you're awesome and thank you. This one's come, it's called, I'm awesome. <laughs> okay. So this one, this one, actually I won't pick on it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll show, I'll show what we're talking about here. So your partner, we're going to switch roles again, and B is going to go first this time, okay? And we're going to need to stand up for this. Whoever's talking stands up, and the person who's listening sits, all right? You maintain eye contact, and you say, I'm awesome, okay? We're going to do this for a minute. So it looks something like this. I'm awesome because I've got a loud voice. I'm awesome because I'm a good dad. I'm awesome because I'm a good driver. I'm awesome because I stand solidly and I wear, I look good in black. I'm awesome because, you get what I'm saying? Okay. The receiving person, their job is to look at you, keep eye contact, nod and say, yes. They're to agree with you. Okay. That's it. And you do that for a minute. And if you run out of things to say why you're awesome, I'm awesome because I'm awesome, okay? And again, you don't have to cure cancer to be awesome, okay? You can be awesome because you got nice hair, because you got nice eyes, you got a good smile, you're proud of your business, whatever it is, okay? Because this is something else we do not do. We do not give ourselves credit. We do not take the time to, sh to, to really feel and experience how good we're doing. And so, of course, we feel tired and burnt out and negative and right? Because we're not taking in the good that's coming from the environment. We're not giving any good to ourselves. We're not taking time for ourselves. So of course we're going to feel tired and burnt out and not as creative and not as successful as we could be. Yes? Yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So get in your partners, please. Thank your partners. What did you learn? What was that like? Who wants to share? Sorry? Right? It's like it's cr crossing your arms the wrong way. It's weird. It feels weird. It feels wrong. Right? How many people felt wrong doing it? Honestly. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> it's intense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's why you can't sit, right? You have yeah. to stand and, you know, really, you, like, what I usually do is, like, you know, get people to get up on something side. And, okay, I'm awesome, right? Okay, you know what I mean? And really over, oversell it because it's an exercise. It's just to get, you know, build that muscle. It's okay. interesting, as, you, as I kept saying, how I could feel, I felt liberated. Like, <laughs> awesome. I felt that freedom of, like, yes, I have done this stuff. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Give your you you feel. Oh, wait a second. I am successful. I, I, I yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That is me. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Anybody else? You get to know somebody very quick. Yeah, well, it was true. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you know a lot about your partner now. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. You know, I think uh, for me, one of the things is, is uh, what we talked about being self-centric before, having an ego, and it's trying to find that line to compliment yourself but not feel that you're you know, being self-centered or have a big ego or something mm -hmm. like that. Cause yeah. Yeah. And that's the problem for me. It's like, because I, you know, was brought up to service others. That's how you right. get to heaven, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you not, how do you stop that and allow yourself to be complimented and mm -hmm. do stuff, right? Without feeling like you have a big ego or something. Yeah. It, it, it is. A, you, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I found hearing myself say it just reaffirms myself almost start giving me self-worth or mm -hmm. believing more in myself yep. and I say, like, hey, yeah, no, I am that. Yeah, exactly. You own it. 
and, and, and the, the way you do it is like, it's going to feel weird. Okay. And so you do it as a, as a discipline and you feel it out and you let it go through you. Right. But here's, the, here's the deal. Okay. If I believe in myself and I feel that I have something that is of value, I'm much more willing to share it than if I don't believe in myself or I feel I got to be humble or I can't like, you know, share whatever. Okay. If I didn't, for, for many years, myself personally, I didn't think I had anything to share. And I wouldn't be here in front of you guys. You guys wouldn't be getting this information. I wouldn't be doing the stuff I do with my clients or on TV or whatever, because if I didn't feel like there was something here, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer it. Okay. And what, what do you think it would do for my relationships? <coughs> you see what I'm saying? So this idea that we have, and again, you know, not bashing any religion or anything like that, but, but I think we've misconstrued a lot of this stuff to think that in order to be good or be decent people, that we gotta be, oh no, no, that's no, no, that's, that's okay. I'm okay, right? No, I'm good. You can be good too. We can all be good. And I'm, because I'm good, I, I can show up and I got something to offer. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, so it really it is empowering to actually say these things out loud. Can you say something else? Nope. Okay. Um, something you can do at home, get a piece of paper, write out everything you've done, right? I, I call it the greatest hits list, my greatest hits list, okay? And write them out and put numbers to them. And then you can actually look at this and say, okay, well, pretend this was John or Mary or Sue. What would I think about John or Mary or Sue if I looked at this thing? It's like, wow, this, this person's done all this other stuff. And they realize, hey, wait a second, that's me. It's like, ah! And then if you have to go into something where you need to be in the right state, read your greatest hits list. Read it over, recite it to yourself. It helps put you in the right state to be successful. Okay? I found it helped. Found, I did this a few years ago just as part of my journey. And I found it helpful for people to tell me sometimes. Because you don't always... Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't always see it. Yeah. Right. You just don't because you don't think about it. It's every day. But when someone turns around to you and says, well, look what you did here. Mm -hmm. and look how you did that. And you're like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it is part of the list. I guess, again, a good, a good friend or a good partner or a good, like, a coach or a psychologist, somebody can help you give you this. I have to ask people who you wouldn't normally ask, mm -hmm. and I have to ask my ex. Mm -hmm. Good for you. It was <laughs> an mm -hmm. interesting exercise, mm -hmm. but it was really good. Yeah, it right. gives you some insight into yourself. Positive stuff. But Absolutely. Teaching resume writing to kids and focusing on skills that they have and putting a positive slant yep. on them so you can sell yourself to somebody else. And they can go back and read it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So it's a really important skill to have, to be able to, you know, my, my psychologist says, it's a sad dog who can't wag his own tail. Mm -hmm. Right? So <laughs> you got to wag your own tail. Okay? So we're almost done here, but I just want to take one minute, if it's okay, to tell you a little bit about how to keep this going, if you're interested. Right? Okay. So I've got, you know, you've probably seen these up here. So I've got a few products at the back. We can, you can come back there if you've got time and kind of look at them and stuff like that. But I've got some stuff on parenting. Um, one, of the, one of the ones that is a big seller is uh, Beating Burnout for Women. Okay, that, that's a big seller for some reason. Um, <laughs> and I've got something on communication and relationships as well. And this whole, the, the, the whole Feed the Goose uh, idea here is basically contained or partially contained within this CD here. This is called The Me Factor. And it talks a little bit more about uh, some of these concepts and goes a little more in depth. Then I've got a couple things on mind-body connection. So there's audio and then there's a video that um, I'm offering as well. In addition to that, I'm actually gonna be putting together an online class, like a group. And that's gonna be starting probably in a month or so. So if anybody's interested in that, um, if it's okay, I've got your email, so I'll be able to send you some information so just be aware that that's coming up, okay? So how did you feel? Give me some feedback. And by the way, I do have some uh, evaluation forms if you wouldn't mind filling out. Does everybody have one? Sorry, again. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So we'll do that. We'll do that after. But did it, did, who learned something today? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So should you celebrate? We didn't talk about celebration, but would celebration also help to put, would this also help you to feed the you? Yeah, celebration is one of those things that crosses a number of those categories we talked, to, talked about before. And I suggest that you actually get, you know, maybe 
arrange a celebration partner where once a week you guys talk for five minutes and all you do is like, hey, let me tell you about my awesome week. I did this. And oh, that's awesome. You're great. Uh, right? And then you just share that. You just share partners like that because that kind of puts you in that right frame of mind. Okay? So when you, when you celebrate something, it changes you. Okay? So I want you guys to celebrate what you've learned today and just even celebrate the fact that you guys shared some time and you know invested some money and effort into coming here and in, into yourselves today so i'd like everybody to get up and you've got to you know go around the room meet people and what i'd like you to do is give either a high five or a hug to at least five people and say you're awesome, you're awesome. and celebrate okay and then you come back